Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the mystery of Saturn's rings. Specifically we're going to be talking about the new study that seems to have discovered that these rings are actually very young in comparison to everything else in our solar system. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So, these beautiful rings you see in front of you are the beautiful rings of Saturn, the biggest rings in our solar system, and something that has fascinated scientists for a very long time. Specifically, very recently, during the Cassini mission, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, the uh, Cassini probe got to actually jump through these rings a few times and collect a lot of data. And we finally got to look at this data and interpret it a little bit and discover some really cool things. So uh, let's actually take a look at NASA's eyes and actually look at what Cassini was doing when it was going through the rings right here. So there is Cassini. It's going to be flying through the rings and it actually did this several times uh, and got to collect a lot of data on the way. And uh, what we discovered is that, well, something unusual. We actually got to collect uh, what's known as the um, dust count. As a matter of fact, this is very specific dust known as dark dust. And um, dark dust is something that collects in our solar system, usually in the ring systems especially, um, when uh, things get old. Basically, our solar system is actually quite polluted. There's a lot of dust flying around coming from the outer solar system, and a lot of these particles are usually darker. Many of the rings around other planets, such as, for example, Neptune, uh, which I can try to show you if I get the right angle here. And uh, here they are, the rings of Neptune. These are much darker than the rings of Saturn. And for the longest time, we actually thought that Saturn's rings were also old and possibly uh, were there since the beginning of the solar system. But the more recent study by uh, Bonnie Buratti of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory actually decided to question this. And what they did is essentially measure the um, various particles inside the rings of Saturn and try to find out um, if those uh, dust particles that would usually be coming from the outer solar system sort of met the expectations of something that was 4.5 billion years old. And turns out it doesn't. Well, first of all, we don't even know how massive the rings are yet, but although we assumed originally that these rings were about 10 to 20 masses of Mimas, one of the moons of Saturn, which is right there orbiting around Saturn, turns out that it's not even half of Mimas, um, possibly maybe even 40% of Mimas. So these rings uh, wouldn't be really attracting that much dust to begin with. On top of that, what we've discovered is that, well, it just seems that these rings are way too bright to be old. If these rings were five or f at least four billion years old, as we originally thought, they would be much, 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 much darker and they would be filled with this dark dust that is coming from the outer solar system. But they're not. They're very bright. They're very, very icy. They're very reflective. And the actual um, count of those dust particles that would be coming from the outer solar system is very low. In other words, these rings are very likely only about maximum 200 million years old, which means that when the dinosaurs were ruling the Earth, these rings were not even around. So the dinosaur astronomers never got to see them, if there was such a thing. Probably not, but you never know. So what exactly happened here and how did we actually form these rings? Well. We can try to simulate this using the Universe Sandbox and basically try to see how these rings could have formed. So one of the ways, and this is what we thought originally, was that it's it's possible that a uh, some sort of an asteroid or very likely a comet, uh, icy comet specifically, passed by Saturn, basically flew by here, and um, was captured. And then, as it was captured, there it is, uh, it fell apart due to strong gravitational forces of Saturn, and then, oh, this one got swallowed. And then the uh, leftovers basically turned into rings. That was the original assumption. Well, it turns out maybe, just maybe, this is not exactly what happened. For many, many reasons, we now believe that uh, these rings could have come from a moon that used to be around Saturn. So we think that it's either that there was a moon on the outskirts somewhere, so let's just actually create a random 
small moon orbiting around Saturn somewhere in the distance. So there it is. Um, so we, either there was a, a regular moon that was orbiting around Saturn and then at some point actually ended up losing its orbit because there's a spot in the Saturn's orbit where um, some of the moons actually don't have, especially the irregular moons, don't have a very stable orbit. They can totally change orbits. And so this one changed its orbit, collided with something else, and we can actually just do this by literally just colliding with something manually. So it collided with something else and uh, started to essentially uh, move closer and closer to Saturn and okay that was a that was a puny collision what was this that that's not exactly what I was asking for let's let's do let's do another one let's do something better let's collide with Mimas here we go oh there we go that's beautiful so it collided uh, with something else and started to approach Saturn and then let's actually cheat a little bit started to approach Saturn closer and closer until it reached the location where the Roche limit broke it apart. So it's probably going to be somewhere right here. Let's see. Let's see if this is going to be enough. Maybe not. Okay, let's try this again. Move it right here toward the ring system and see if this actually makes this object uh, fall apart. Let's actually wait a little bit because it is within the Roche limit of uh, Saturn. And uh, basically this by itself uh, created the um, the rings, but also probably the smaller moons. We also think that maybe, just maybe, um, some other major moons were created this way. The beautiful Enceladus that you see right there uh, may have actually been also created during this event, or at least influenced by this event. Now, we don't think that this is actually a young moon. As a matter of fact, the geological formations here indicate that it is a relatively old moon, but nevertheless, there is a slight possibility that a lot of the moons that we thought were ancient are actually not as old as we assumed. So this particular event that's about to create the rings any second now, basically, oh, there, there you go, uh, basically occurred about 200 million years ago. And for this reason, uh, a lot of scientists now believe that, well, maybe just maybe the rings of Saturn are actually a kind of a brand new addition to our solar system. In other words, Saturn, despite being the ring planet, may have not actually been the ring planet for a very long time in terms of astronomical terms. And this is what created these rings. At least that's one of the possible suggestions so far. There's definitely going to be other suggestions that will try to explain how and why the rings appear so young. Maybe just maybe there's a way that this dust is actually removed from them, or maybe there is some sort of a other explanation that we haven't considered. But for now, we think that uh, these rings are actually kind of a new thing. Well. If these rings are new, then everything that's within this ring system, including those moons that you see right here, and possibly even Enceladus, or maybe even Calypso, maybe just maybe, are young moons as well. And if they are young moons, especially Enceladus, this would actually suggest that our attempts to find life here might not be very successful. Because if this moon is only 200 million years old, the life would not have enough time to actually form. So... Whether this is true or not, time will tell, but for now, this is kind of the assumption. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the rings of Saturn. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. <laughs>